um, chat with all of you all, help you all free, feel free in this lockdown. And before we do that, um, it would be a nice way to understand the kind of situation that we are in. So I have made a few slides which um, may seem a little boring in the beginning, but uh, it's just a way to understand the kind of situation that we all are facing today. And then we will uh, move on to have a little more fun. So Jacinta, if you could just um, uh, kind of yeah. share those slides. Yeah, I'll, just, I'll just get on to that. So at any point, if anybody is not being able to hear, you all can just send a message on the uh, chat just saying can't hear or something. So I'll just check my connections because, you know, we can have a lot of technical difficulties at such times. Yes, so um, I have kind of label this pre presentation as embracing the new normal because uh, I will explain why I have said this. So let's just move on to the next slide to understand what exactly is this pandemic which everybody is talking about. So uh, when we talk about the pandemic, the World Health Organization in 2014 defined the pandemic as a worldwide spread of a new disease. So even though this uh, coronavirus has been there for a while, as it is seen, the presentation that it has today is very different because of which there are no vaccines, there are no medications, and we are all in a, a kind of a soup as to what to do next. So infectious diseases have been a part of this civilization of the human race for quite some time now. We've seen MERS, we've seen SARS, and uh, it's not, nothing novel. But this COVID-19, which has come, is a novel a kind of a virus today and it will take some time for us to develop some sort of a vaccine or a cure for the same or unless we go on to develop the herd immunity as everybody talks about it. So moving on to the next slide. So needless to say the point is that we don't need to go into this biology right now but this pandemic is by itself causing a lot of uh, fear this is causing nervousness, anxiety, and helplessness because we don't really know what's going to happen tomorrow. Every day we are relying on news or, you know, some numbers and statistics saying that how there is a spike and things like that. So it is very normal that we are kind of feeling this loneliness and nervousness. And also what is happening today is that there is a stigmatization attached to this coronavirus. Uh, people are afraid to say that, yes, uh, I have been infected by it or somebody who I know has been infected by it. And we are hiding away. This, again, will cause a lot of loneliness and uh, feelings of um, discrepancy and how we kind of prejudice against people. So we need to be very careful that, yes, although this is an infectious, a highly infectious disease, we cannot stigmatize and we cannot hide from the fact that somebody is kind of affected by it. So this is a little bit about the fear and anxiety that people are experiencing. Moving on to the uh, third slide. So as we all know that in November 2019, Wuhan in China saw the first outbreak of coronavirus. And then uh, without just with a blink of an eye, it had spread globally. Yeah? So we are kind of facing the branch today where India had controlled the situation quite well. But as we are going to the unlock phase, we are seeing the numbers raising. And because most of us are in Goa, Goa had a number of just seven and we were in complete lockdown. And today we are unlocked and yet the numbers are going in thousands. So yes, it is a little um, worrisome, but that does not really mean that we need to kind of um, be cooped up and succumb in this worry, right? So let's see ways in which we can help ourselves. Uh, the main thing that I, I, I see and it, which has happened to me also is routines have changed. Yeah, So people used to wake up at a certain time, perhaps go for a morning walk, go for work, let's say, or, you know, engage grandchildren in their studies and things like that. And today everybody is stuck at home. So automatically the routines that we had, the so-called structure that we had in our life is born to the dogs you can say and we are uh, at a complete loss so this is one of the main things and our society has come to a halt where people are thinking twice should i actually go out and how fast fast can i come back in so the main issue which we are facing today is the disruption of daily routines uh, which is happening 
So going to the next slide, I want to explain why this is the new normal. Okay, I understand that we are not happy with this normal. We want to go back to our regular normal where things were uh, fine and safe and happy. We could go out when we wanted. We could take a walk when we wanted, and you know. But uh, COVID nineteen cannot vanish one fine day. It will take time for this particular um, pandemic to kind of subside, and so it is. We have to understand that. Let's make it a part of our existence. Let's accept that this is going to be here. So how do we adjust? What do we do to protect ourselves? How do we incorporate certain lifestyles so that this pandemic does not have such a adverse effect on us? Yeah. So that is why I'm calling this the new normal because for some time, for two years or so, let's say it's going to be a part of us, be a part of our children, our grandchildren, and things like that. How do we help ourselves, and how do we help them? That is the issue here. Then that is the disconnected caring. Uh, okay, so somebody wants to say something. Uh, okay. So now, uh, as we are, um, I just gave you a brief introduction. What we could now do is that um, have a little bit of a chat to try to understand what have we been up to in this lockdown. I don't want uh, to focus on negativities as such. I know everybody is experiencing some sort of distress, some sort of a burden, and things like that. Let's look at what all did we uh, do in these days when we were actually locked up in the house. So, if anybody is willing to uh, start sharing, if not, I will start sharing a story. So, anybody who wants to share can unmute their microphone and share the story. If you are not comfortable with that, you can just type it over here, and one Jacinta or myself could just, you know, read it out. So it's just us experience here. So anybody wants to take the initiate because you're a lot of fun and enthusiastic batch here. For me, I don't think I have. I don't think a I great have. difference. Okay. Because That's I nice. live alone, I am a retired person. The only problem is I can't go out. So the all the rest of the things I do, I engage myself doing all the puzzles or crossword or Scrabble, doing cooking, dancing when the FM is on, everything to myself. So the only thing is I the only difference is I can't go out of the house. I go once in uh once in ten days, just go out of the locality, go purchase something and I come within 10-15 minutes. So this is my life. I'm sorry, I'm but I can't uh, see the name. Uh, name of who's speaking? I'm Genevieve here. Genevieve, okay, hi. Uh, that's really nice of you to share. In which area are you exactly? I'm in Pororim. Oh, I'm in Pororim. Pororim. Yeah. So uh, she spoke about some really nice activities that she does, even though she lives by herself. She cooks and then she plays Scrabble, which is quite interesting. But how do you feel when you can't go out as you usually did? Yeah, that's the only problem. But of course, I have a beautiful view from my eyes. So I just stand on my balcony and I keep talking to the <laughs> the greenery, I could say. Just just talk to my... Yeah, I, I keep talking. I talk, okay, keep talking to the plants or if the birds are flying around or they're they are bathing or like, you know, twittering or whatever it is. I keep just talking to them as if they are my... Pals, what else to do? <laughs> if the greenery replies to your chatter, you have to see a psychologist. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, that was a, that was a very nice meme which uh, somebody had said. I believe the one which Ma'am said just now about that. You know, if you actually are talking to someone, it's okay. But if you're seeing the furniture talking back to you, then something is the issue there. Uh, but it's uh, but it's really nice to know how how well you're coping with the situation uh, right now. And research also says that plants benefit from you know uh, when there is positive talk happening and things like that. They grow in a better yeah. environment. So that's a great going, Genevieve. I'm really uh, glad that you have kind of understood and accepted the reality and you know molded yourself. I'm just it. taking I'm taking just one day yes. at a time because I'm a cancer patient right. and I'm going through. I'm right. a survivor in one and another one has cropped up and I'm just living with it. But thank God that I'm okay. So. Yes, Genevieve. Okay. 
so um, i'm sure you're going to have all the strength to uh, live with this each day at a time yeah. does anybody else want to try this someone there on a little spoon of this just in just okay that is uh, beena i guess who's being helped by her granddaughter that's really sweet uh yeah janavi so i'm really um, positive that you're going to cope up this time as well so does anybody have something to say to janavi some words of positivity yes victoria victoria you need to unmute yourself no we are with her and we pray and hope for her full recovery be brave yes. stay home stay strong caring okay so can we have another story that we can share here is anybody else willing to share their kind of routine that they had during this lockdown yeah actually it will be interesting to know because uh, we're we're all locked down and we can all help each other by what we're uh, engaging in because that could give uh, you know more thought to somebody else also to kind of initiate yes. that somebody else to Harry, I feel somebody is talking, but we are not being able to catch the person. Is it? Is there anybody? Okay, Albert, you want to say something? Yeah. Yeah. Go ahead. Yes, Anta. Yeah. Can you Can you hear me? Yes. 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 It's all. It will take one and a half hour to charge. Can, can you hear me? Yes, Albert. We can hear you. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's like uh, Lalita and myself. We are in lockdown in Melbourne, but okay. we are with our daughter and our grandchild. But uh, we do a lot of reading on the pandemic and the lockdown effects that are happening around the world. but uh, we have decided that the best thing is that we have to keep our immune system up and stay strong so we eat the right things every day a little bit of exercise and uh, we keep uh, in touch with the group on quiz or other things so we just keep ourselves on the lively side the less we and try to keep ourselves entertained and in connect connected to all our friends that's brilliant that's brilliant so um being away from your home also could be you know a little bit of a um, change i should say not always negative but i believe you all have coped up with this you all are together and with family so that's a positive thing hoping you all will come back soon and safe and continue reading continue sharing i guess that's the best way to kind of stay healthy and stay strong in this particular pandemic so cheers to you all um anybody else here who would like to comment or just say hi 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 yes um, so tell me yeah i live um, this my husband and me we live at home though retired we had a usual lifestyle get up in the morning the few little things we have to do the cooking but i think now we have become i have become a better cook trying out <laughs> new recipes and maybe it's nice to sit down and have the meal together in the meal and uh, another thing i love to do is uh, which i started during this lockdown calling up many of my friends or relatives who live alone and you know like there's a chat with them maybe sometimes it's not a little chat it's a long chat but i know it like they themselves say thank you so much for thinking of me and calling me and it really feels good you know at that moment that may be a person who feels so depressed during this time because normally when i speak to them they some of them live in villages where they say it's so difficult to get the daily essentials and then there are many who say nobody comes home we can't go out even to the little market place and we feel all cooped in but at least when somebody calls we are happy that somebody has thought about us so i feel you know just keeping in touch 
that has helped me maybe to feel a good feeling and that I've made somebody happy or made somebody feel that they are loved, they are appreciated, and they are wanted. So basically, that's what we do. And the rest of the time, maybe a little gardening, because as I think Genevieve said, being with in the green world also keeps us green. So that's what I love to do. Spend time with that, listening to music. And as FM plays, dance away. So maybe dancing to the tunes and keeping ourselves going is what keeps us alive during this time. And thanks to JC, thanks to Jacinta and Nitesh, who are keeping us going with all the active programs, the quiz and all these programs. So that's what it is. Oh wow, this is this is amazing. So we are dancing, we are cooking, and uh, we are also calling up one another. That is a very important aspect of social support over here, which I would like to kind of focus upon, because um, social support is basically having uh, having each other. People should be there for one another. Okay, I'm not talking about financial support over here. I am mainly talking about support for one another. So what happens is that in the past, before the lockdown, we were so busy in our lives, I believe, that we never actually got time to call up and, you know, kind of find out how is the other. But uh, yeah, this is a really nice incident where we are getting the time and I think we should cherish that time to kind of call up one another, be there for each other, recognize when somebody is feeling low. So uh, it's amazing how y'all are so self-sufficient and looking after not only yourselves, but also others. And that is something that is um, amazing. So really, really well, well done. So anyone else who would love to share? Hello, this is Mary. Hi. Hello. Hi, 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 Mary. Uh, as you said, it uh, gets you pretty bogged down being locked in the house, especially my retirement and this came very close together so whereas looking down to really traveling and going about and here i am locked up but then i turned to growing plants catching up with my reading and catching up with uh, classmates college friends and i make it a point to call at least a few two three people who i have lost touch with for a long time right that's really nice, Mary. That gave me and gave me um gave me uh, myself. Uh, I actually got married just in Feb, you know. So this was just before the lockdown. So we had great plans that you know during and I'm a lecturer, so we have holidays like in April and May. So our plan was that we should go somewhere in May, you know, the so-called holiday that you have, and everything of course is just shut and we have nowhere to go. But then looking at the positive side of it, uh, I could actually connect with my husband better, get to know each other better because you're staying at home together, understanding the tantrums of one another. So I think the entire thing is to look at the positive in times of the negative. So and, I, and whichever stories that you all are telling, you all all know how to do it. So I, I am just going to listen to you all and learn. I have nothing to say because as a psychologist giving uh, wisdom, I'm getting the wisdom from you all. So that, that's, that's amazing. So um, moving on, anybody else? Jacinta, would you like to say something? Because she's looking after you all all the time. Yes, yes. Hi, hi, hi. hi. I would like to say that, you know, I, I realized that by making a kind of a schedule for me through the day has helped a lot. So I start like in the morning, immediately as I get up with some exercise and then, you know, plan something through the day and you feel that, okay, I've done something worthwhile today and it makes you feel good, you know. Also, uh, another thought of one of, somebody else mentioned about calling up an elderly person or somebody who's in a, in a home or living by themselves helps them a lot and helps you also a lot to help around whoever you can at this time. Thank you. Yes, Maurice, that's, uh, that's brilliant. Uh, talking about schedules and routines, because uh, for a point of time, we all must have lost those routines. Uh, if we used to wake up at 6 a.m., then now it's like, why to wake up at 6 a.m.? I don't have anywhere else to go. I'd rather sleep a bit. So what happens is that your entire cycle uh, gets changed. But having these routines are extremely uh, helpful and beneficial for everybody, right from children to anybody in the um, 
in the human development phase because children too though they are not going to school uh, if you all have children at home and staying with you all you all need to make sure they do have a routine because you know they need to one point of time go back to that uh, routine so whether it is studying at a particular time eating at a particular time sleeping at a particular time having a routine is exceptionally important as an example here we have life uh, before i move on i have a message over here from raji so she says that first half i'm totally busy with the routine like the morning cooking packing the lunch for uh, d and i for office okay i did daughter in law i'm sorry i did not get that part taking care of the two grandkids helping them with the online and offline grooming uh, then we have an hour's walk in the home have half an hour of exercise take care and grooming of the plants and in the afternoon going online with google meet for an educative lecture online yoga session reading talking to people playing indoor games with the children watching cartoons with them etc so this is um, this is also brilliant because uh, raji has not allowed her routine as such to change and had get hampered because of the lockdown and it's an advantage because she's with her family so she's uh, that's would lucky to be with her family and that keeps her kind of you know busy all the time having kids in the house but um, apart from that the ones who are by themselves also uh, you all can uh, do the same by just keeping yourself occupied by a variety of things that you all are already doing as you all are saying so keeping the forum open again anybody else who is willing to share okay so um, is there anybody here who's willing to share or i will share a story with you all yeah, anita you can go ahead anita i can see you with your hands up <laughs> oh yeah 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 please go ahead hi i think it's so, right i decided right in the beginning of this uh, pandemic that i was not going to be negative about it it was there you know, there's nothing i could do about it so just just let it run its course however long it takes um we can't change it so why why give myself the angst you know and worry and what will happen and what won't happen i tend to go out maybe once in 10 days or so and just get what's necessary in. but what i found that has brought us um much closer together is where i live the neighbors we all take it sort of not 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 as a planned thing but if i cook I'll take some to my neighbors. They'll do the same thing to me. So we're we're always sharing, and that's something that we never did before, because everyone was so busy doing their own thing, coming and going, and you know they just didn't pay attention as much attention to each other as we probably should have. Um, and I also made up my mind that if I'm going to stay at home, I'm going to find things that I have been putting off doing. and i promised myself that i'd do at least one thing every day i'm stuck to that promise quite honestly <laughs> but i try i try very hard to make sure that i get one thing out of the way at least um and i have two dogs who who have never had so much conversation in their lives <laughs> so they're very happy so you know we just just positively just go on and and see where where it leads to Thank you thank you Anita this is a lot uh, that she has spoken about first thing is accepting that we cannot change this pandemic so uh, this is the way it's going to be for a while what we can change is the way we think and the way we act so the way we think that is um, the negative thoughts or the positive thoughts they will automatically have effect on our emotions the way we feel so if i have more positive thoughts i would feel more positively and therefore act positively but if i have these negative thoughts then my feelings too will be and therefore i will be in the bed perhaps most of the day so that is in our hands how we uh, train our mind in a way that's what psychology is about the mind over everything else uh sharing sharing is another aspect that anita spoke about and she said that how it is possible perhaps in goa or in places where the pandemic is not affected to such a great extent where we can go to houses you know safely and share food share meals it's a very nice idea to get to know one another better to be there for each other in times of crisis and having pets at this time seems to be like the greatest uh, boon because they are getting the attention and love perhaps which they never got because we were so busy with our own things 
So um, thank you, Anita. Thank you so much for sharing this. And I'm sure we can all incorporate this in our lives if at any point of time we feel that loneliness, because feeling loneliness is also a part and parcel of, of this entire life that we have. So that is also perfect. So thank you, Anita. Anybody else here? No. Hello. Hi, hi, hi. Yes. Uh, for me, not much has changed in my routine because I've been a homemaker now for many years. I gave up my teaching job. Right. It's like the same routine, housework and all. Nothing much has changed. But I feel my daughters are in, more into cooking. And they keep calling me up, asking for recipes, sending me pictures of things they have cooked. So there, there is always this exchange. That's something more exciting for me as well, to know that they are doing well at that. But, and uh, Radhima, this is especially for you. Okay. So you've just been married. And now you're getting more time with your husband. But you know, after nearly 47 years of uh, marriage, for me, that is the best part of this lockdown because uh, uh, my husband was running his business and we hardly used to get that much time together at a stretch. It was always, you know, rushing and getting things done and uh, we've hardly had, uh, except when we went on holidays, but it's never been a holiday for three months. So at this time, I feel uh, we're getting so much more time to spend together, to talk about so many things. And I feel, for me, that has been the best part of this lockdown. And I think, all in all, I'm very happy, even though, yes, things are difficult. You think of other people who are going through so much. And there's very little, whatever we can, we can do to help them. But all in all, I am quite content at this time as it is. Thank you. Wow, that's that's nice. That's nice. That's really nice. And also um, another aspect which she's brought about here is the homemakers. I think it's a very tedious job to be a homemaker because there's a lot of uh, work that is to be done. And this, it's a very, uh, it's a job which is not, um, a lot of gratitude is not given over here. So really I'm really grateful to homemakers because it is not an easy job at all. And I think the lockdown has taught us that too, because many of our house helps and all were not here during our lockdown and we were doing the work ourselves. So that has given us a perspective on the Western life as well, where, you know, you are actually so independent, you're doing things yourself. So that is, that is um, unbelievable. Uh, another very nice aspect is how everybody is learning to manage themselves in the lockdown and you're seeing your children blossom because uh, they're doing things perhaps they never did. And I think even Anita spoke about the concept of moving out of your comfort zone. So, you know, when we are in our comfort zone, we are very comfortable. But pushing ourselves, we never had time to do it. We never had the patience to do it. And now we are getting that kind of a time. So might as well do one activity each day, which you didn't really like to do, but you know it will be for your growth. Yeah, so that is a very nice concept. Harnessing relationships as Maridel, I'm sorry if I get your name wrong. Uh, as she said, you know, uh, harnessing relationships is very essential because this lockdown has taught us that things come and go, but uh, people stay with us forever. So it's very important to um, understand the importance of, of what you have and uh, kind of move on. So thank you, Maridel, for that. And uh, let's look at another story, please. Jacinta, you can share because Jacinta has been looking after you all and she's been a constant support for you all for so long. So I'm sure she has a story to say and you all are going to be there for her too. So Jacinta, you too can feel free to share and pitch in whenever you feel like. Yeah, I'd, I'd love to do that. Uh, actually, I think uh, if, if you don't mind, I think Alka was putting her hand up. Yeah, 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 sure. sure. Just Go mention ahead. her name because you know, that's name I know, but... Yeah, hi. 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 Uh, well, uh, I mean, I, I do, I do, I do miss my children, and you know, the that fear is very gripping. That you know, the way this virus is spreading, you know, that they won't be able to come down. And uh, God knows, I mean, I'm just keeping my fingers crossed. Especially, I live in Vasco and Vasco has been very hit very badly. Yes. But, you know, irrespective of that, as the life has to go on and one has to accept um, what is happening around, 
uh, you know, in Vasco, a lot of areas uh, have been locked down almost for a month, like Zuari, Zari, Mangor. So, uh, you know, I raised uh, quite a lot of funds and we have been, my team, we have been feeding these people, you know, these people. We have been giving them rations uh, for a week and uh, vegetables, you know, through Taza Tokri. Can you all hear me? Yes, yes. Jacinta, can you hear me? Yeah. So we, we have been busy with that and I have been able to achieve this, you know, raising funds more than a, probably 1.5 lakhs and we have been uh, uh, more than now nearly one and a half months and we have fed more than 200 families so far. And uh, this I could do sitting at home literally with the help of uh, the area councillors, the punch. Uh, what I do is, you know, on the telephone, we have, uh, we, we request the grocer to pack those packets. Uh, we give him the budget, you know, like 450 rupees and he gives us at no loss, no profit. And um, uh, he has been providing, you know, rice and dal and oil and all that day-to-day -day stuff. And we see that each family gets a ration at least, which will suffice at least for a week. And this has been going on now for one and a half months. Initially, we did it in Mangor area. And I didn't step out of the house really for this because I don't want to take risks uh, as the age is not on our side. As the age is not on our side. So that really kept me very happy. And, you know, it was a gratifying experience, you know, to help the unfortunate ones, though those who wish to work, but they can't work. They have lost their jobs. And another thing is, they are daily wage workers. So because of the lockdown, they are not able to earn their bread. So we have been helping them. And of course, um, like all others, you know, uh, I, 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 have, I have my own things to keep me busy at home, like gardening, cooking, reading. WhatsApp takes a lot of time in fact these days. You know? So, so it's, 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 uh, it's somehow we do definitely keep busy. But somewhere, somewhere that fear sometimes takes over and and the children you know nowadays the technology is so advanced that they can track our movement sitting in abroad uh, in the east and west wherever they are you know they can track our movements the moment we step out of the house they know that we have gone out and you know so they also keep checking on us and uh, we've been having you know with all the entire family having uh, quiz programs on zoom and things like that so uh, so generally, yeah, I mean, uh, the lockdown has definitely uh, brought, uh, brought the family together. We spent a lot of time together. And that's, that's the main uh, boon, I would say. They would ring up once or twice a week and, you know, that's about it. But now we see each other more often, although, of course, uh, on the media, I mean, on the TV and things like that, you know. But yes, I mean, one has to, uh, this lockdown has definitely taught all of us a lot many things, especially um, to be self-reliant. And that's what I think you all are doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much, Alka, for sharing. And um, as you have said that you've been helping a lot of people and that brings us to a point of how fortunate we are that we have certain things which, you know, an entire group of society does not, does not really have. People have lost their jobs and, you know, to bring normal ration of 200 rupees also people are struggling. So uh, kudos to you and your team for making up, making this effort. And um, I guess through this group also, you know, if, if not in Vasco, perhaps you all can spread this in Goa, if not nowhere else and, you know, try yeah, to help yeah. people. Yeah. yeah, can I, can I? Interrupt. Can I? We yeah, sure, are sure, there sure. on the Facebook, you know. I have been into social work for more than 10 years now. Right, and, right. Uh, yeah, it's, it's in Jagrut Nagrik Manch, Vasco. So you can see okay. my activities on the Facebook for last 10 yes, years. Yes, yeah. yes. So all of us, you know, can get involved in this in some form and you have Alka to guide us, you know, because it may be maybe new at this, some of us. So that is great work and really that the sense of gratification and satisfaction that you get when you, you know, help somebody else is something, something totally different, which cannot be sometimes described. So um, that keeps people going and we need to, gen we need that generativity, giving back to the society what we have received. So if we can do that in some form, that is that is one of the greatest joys we have. So thank you, Alka, for that. Yes, so Jacinta is raising. 
uh, Nora and Clarissa also had raised their hands. Thank you. Right. So, uh, either one of you, Nora or Clarissa, please go ahead. Uh, Jacinta, actually, I've typed yes. everything and said, yes, 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 read yes, it, yes, maybe? Yes, yes I, uh, I would read it. Uh, Clarissa has typed it. Um, you no, know, one second. Yeah. So, Clarissa says, when this lockdown began, my husband and I began to pray the rosary, also do a physical exercise from YouTube, also play a game of cards to keep us entertained. We also do an hour of meditation, which has been very uplifting and enabled us to accept the present situation. Jesse's programs have kept us ever upbeat. So this is what Clarissa says. So um, yeah, having faith and prayer is very essential. People have different ways of uh, you know showing their faith. There is spirituality. There is the rosary. Different religions have different ways of you know meditating and reaching to the uh, higher power. So that keeps us going on an everyday basis. Uh, meditation is exceptionally important, and so is mindfulness. So uh, the concept of uh, meditation is to concentrate on the present so sometimes not every one of us can sit in a cross leg position and you know try to block all the thoughts in our head because there are so many thoughts which go on coming but it is being present in the here and now so being with your plants and being with your flowers or being or cooking with real um, with real dedication can bring an individual peace bring you in the present moment and that is meditation for you so those who cannot really uh, sit in one place and concentrate on a wall or concentrate on a light or something like that, it's absolutely fine. Uh, indulge in things which you love and you are automatically being present in the moment. Uh, another technique which I would like to speak about at this topic is mindfulness. Uh, I think Anita spoke about it a little bit. Mindfulness is being aware of uh, what you are doing at every point of time. Yeah. So if anyone of you all is sipping a cup of coffee or tea or even water at the moment, you all need to uh, feel the water on your tongue and as it passes through your uh, food pipe and goes into your stomach. What you're doing is you're engaging all your senses. So how does the water taste? Does it have any sound? Are you seeing anything? How does it feel to you? And what do you feel after it? So this can be done when you're having rice, for example. Okay, so it's like a being grateful to the food that you have on your plate. Can't hear you. Uh... Okay, so somebody cannot hear. That is Nora. Uh, can you hear me now, Nora? Um, can you hear me, Nora? Jacinta, can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you, uh, Ridhima. Nora, you're muted, but by, were you the one? You Are you able to hear now? Thumbs up or down? I don't, I don't think she can. Okay. Uh, if anyone is unable to hear, can you just chat or just let me know on the chat or raise your hand? Okay, go ahead. I'll, I'll just check with Nora. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, okay. So like I was telling you that it, let's say we are eating rice uh, with our hand. Okay, so how does the rice feel to our hand? So that's the sense of touch. Then how do you see it? What do you see? How do you how does it taste when it goes onto your tongue and then when you swallow it? So that can you have to be mindful for each activity that you're doing. It may be the yoga you do, it may be the listening to music that you do. So being mindful brings you in the present moment and does not allow you to go back into that negative brooding thought processes. So there are various apps for mindfulness today, and you all all are very technologically savvy here. So what I could do is that these apps I could pass on to just Jacinta, who can you all can just download them and you know kind of listen to them or follow them at one point of time even five to ten minutes a day it's another way of you know dealing with the pandemic situation and helps you in growth basically so yes thank you Clarissa for sharing and uh, Nora Nora wanted to say something Nora is having an issue with a microphone I'll just read what Gita has said to everyone uh, I opened some of my hobby kits I have packed and kept aside since so much time I'm sorry since um, so much time, I did some stitching. Last time, uh, okay, sorry. Last one year, I as, I as a member in a senior center, my mind was set and changed and I'm a follower of Sadhguru. 
he was helping us how to manage the present situation doing sadhana regularly just he giving us some challenging and really enjoy challenges and we are really enjoying it for the first i dance for the first time i danced in front of my husband to video i tried to use locally grown things without any bargain and i also started some translation work wow that that's great that's great geeta so also sometimes we have certain gurus or uh, you know um, spiritual leaders who we would like to follow as she has said she's given you also about sadguru so that is that is great if you all follow them because they, they they do tell us some really inspirational stuff and there are a lot of first times which we are kind of doing now you know which i never did this before but the lockdown has given me a chance to kind of do this i never actually cooked but now for the first time i stepped into the kitchen and this is also with men and females so this stereotype which is there that men don't go into the kitchen men don't do work it is completely broken now because men are taking equal responsibility in uh, helping with the household chores bringing up children or whatever it may be so you know we are actually doing some great work there and she speaks about translation work so you all can learn new languages on various apps which are available for free today uh, oxford has also given some free courses which you all can take again links will be sent to jacinta so learning keeps our neurons alive and our brain alive so that is that is a great way of kind of spending time and uh, spread, spreading knowledge you know there's no age to kind of learn every day is learning so thank you geeta for that uh yes we have some messages here Uh, okay can't hear she says okay anybody else who would like to share yes that's somebody jisinta is anybody trying to share i can hear a microphone now getting unmuted no not really okay so would you like to share or should i share <laughs> no, actually uh, i'd like to share something you know while uh, it's very very heartening to know actually it's even uh, i'm pleasure i'm i'm pleasantly surprised as well that uh, i don't know why call me a negative person but i somehow thought that the lockdown is really uh, pulling down people but what i see that it is not and i think that uh, you know a lot of us have realized that the more we get to do something the more we stay engaged is going to help us more and and i think that's fantastic but uh, somehow uh, for some of us who are completely on our own you know who are uh, isolated even i know of some of us um, not here or in far who are actually locked down in different places and who are not together with the children right so they may have the children grandchildren but then they are far separated from them so for, for for them and for many of us who are living on our own i'm not with exceptions uh while it's easier for some of us to somehow you know that self motivation is there redima but what happens when uh you know it, it sometimes gets to you and are struggling even on your own because i have seen sometimes even if friends reach out like bali bolinda said that she reaches out to friends but then there are some people and i found uh, even elderly in my building that they feel it very load load some to even reach out and call you they say i don't want to be a load on you or somebody actually had a fracture in my building and she never told me and like we used to stay in touch and when i asked her why you never called me she saying no i don't want to be a load on you and and things like that so then how does one should one just suffer like that and how does when you're completely on your own your mind you know even if there are hajar people around you how do you get out to fit and it's very tough yeah this is they're absolutely right because i've seen the situation in my house itself where i saw my uh, mother in law kind of you know she has a business of her own so she used to go at a particular time she used to go at 9 am and she's quite senior now 9 am and then she used to come up come back at 1 and then she used to go back at kind of 4 and come back at 7 so that used to occupy her entire day and this lockdown was something which i don't think she could understand what exactly is happening and why is she at home and what is the situation because goa did not have many cases at that point of time and you know everything was in lockdown so i noticed that she kind of was not talking to anybody and i was also confused because i was quite new that exactly what is happening here and um it was a transition period for me also because this was a new home i was uh, i was kind of adjusting myself into 
So then after a while, I understood that, you know, it is this lockdown, which is kind of bogged her down, giving her feelings of lowness and all. So what I did per, per, per se, because I am in the field, is that I took her to a psychiatrist because I was a little worried. And uh, because she was not opening up to anybody and she used to cry and I used to not understand what is happening. So this is a common thing which I which we see. And also when I did a research, you know, um, when I was in lockdown, I was trying to be productive like all of y'all. So a teacher and myself did a psychological research to understand the distress which people were experiencing in Goa. It was specifically in Goa. So what we realized is that individuals who were not maintaining any routine, individuals who are not engaging in any sort of a physical exercise, and who are by themselves experienced more distress as compared to people who had routines and structures in their life. So this uh, itself shows us that when you are by yourself and you know you tend to kind of succumb into these negative thoughts and there is a sense of helplessness. There are people around you, as Jacinta said, that who are willing to help you, but we are not willing to get that help. We are so low that we'd rather be by ourselves and not get that help. What happens in such situations? Now, uh, what happens in that mind of that person is that, as she said, that you don't want to be a burden to somebody else. And um, we are at a stage where nobody can help us. Life is not worth living and everything is over. Now, these are the spiral thoughts of depression. Yeah, these are the classic spiral thoughts of depression. And if this, if you notice this going on for two weeks or more, two weeks or more, you need help. Help need not be medication, help need not be uh, like, you know, going to a doctor and admitting yourself, but a basic chat with somebody is helpful, provided the person is ready for that. See, if you are not willing to uh, go out, it is very difficult for someone to pull you out because no amount of medication, no amount of therapy will help you because your mind is not open to that. But yes, what we can do, we can be there for that person. In this lockdown, if you all have paid attention to the media, and media news can be quite exaggerated. There are many individuals who have ended their lives for financial reasons or uh, loss of careers and things like that. And the only thing was that they, were, they didn't have that person to talk to or share with or perhaps that's how their thought processes were. So we cannot really change how they think. But what we can do is we can be there for one another as you all are all there for each other in the support group. And if you feel that someone's behavior is drastically changing, you know, that the person is not sleeping well or not eating well or is seeming to be planning for things for the future and keeping everybody safe and talking about things like this is the end of life and all, you all need to uh, call someone from their family or be there with that person. That is the most we can do right now because, um, and of course, take counseling and, uh, and help. I will, I will talk about that in, in the slides. But we cannot, as such, change the person's uh, thought processes uh, one fine day we need to kind of do it very gradually and see how the person takes it we cannot intrude and uh, do that because that can have a negative effect again but yes recognize not only your own emotions but recognize the emotions of other people also that is the main thing i would like to say over here and if you feel that you require help there is help available online you don't need to get up and go it is, uh, there's an app called as covidapp.com, which is introduced by the government of Goa for people all over the world. And uh, there is a slide on this. So we will talk about that uh, in a in little more uh, detail once I show you all the ending slides. So um, I hope that is a little helpful, Jacinta. But um, if anybody else wants to share. Did anyone experience any negative um, phases, you know, negative or low moods during this lockdown? Because, uh, see, um, no feeling is positive or negative, okay? So when we say that anger is a bad emotion or, you know, sadness is a bad emotion, it's nothing like that. There is no emotion that is uh, good or bad. It is what we do with that emotion. So if I am extremely angry and I go and remove my anger on my brother and I hit him, that, that is a negative way of expressing my anger. But if I am extremely angry and I have every right to feel that anger and I go for a run, that is a positive and a constructive way of expressing that anger. So there is no emotion, there is no need to label emotions because when we label emotions, what happens is that it stays with us. That's the reason today we don't call anybody, oh, that person is depressed, that person is autistic. This child has autism spectrum disorder. This person is suffering from depression. That means that it can go away. You don't need to live with that label. 
so uh, when we use such terminologies also we need to be a little careful because these labels kind of stay attached with people and uh, everyone has every right to feel the way they are feeling what you do with these feelings is in your hands so uh, that is one way of uh, understanding this entire situation so did anybody face this sort of you know um, loneliness during this lockdown and helplessness if anybody is willing to share otherwise i understand completely or do you all know of somebody yes i do at times you know i mean children being away yeah. um it certainly the thoughts really haunt you at times you know i mean at this age we are not scared of death Damn. but uh, we don't want to die this way suddenly you know where we you can't really see near and dear ones so these this, these thoughts really these thoughts and fear really keeps me haunting at times but then uh, well uh, uh i mean you 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 meditate you do your yoga and you know somehow keep yourself uh, busy with the things which you love to do and then i overcome but yes at times it does scare me are dipya we can't hear you you i don't know sorry i muted myself um what was i saying ha huh? so i was saying that these thoughts kind of are always there with us like as youngsters we may feel we will give it to our grandparents or somebody like that and you know kind of cause them to have a serious ailment uh, the negative thoughts come but how do we cope with it so as alka spoke about meditation yoga many of you all spoke about exercise calling each other up all these are coping abilities as long as you have these abilities that's great the moment you feel that you know uh, no i'm not being able to cope with this this is kind of pulling me down to a very great extent that's when you need to talk to somebody i'm not saying talk to a professional all the time you can talk to jacinta you can talk to call up someone of your group members and speak to them whoever you are comfortable with so thank you alka for sharing that anybody else who would like to share nowadays youngsters have this fear of loss of job you know so um, we are always worried that you know what if one fine day we are just laid off <laughs> uh so yeah these are thoughts which will obviously be there during the pandemic time and uh, how we deal with it is very very essential anybody wants to share about what has been happening in the media and something you all have heard about because there are a lot of negative um, stories i should say in the media Uh, Ridima, if you don't mind, I I had a question for all of us here. Ah, sure. You know, so uh, I think most of us are all at you know sixty and seventy plus right now, and um, I, I just wanted to understand at you know at this age, for example, Ridima just gave a reference to context for uh, individuals who are like twenty plus, thirty plus something who are fear of losing their job. So I know that Alka mentioned, if I can put it as directly as. fear of dying well we all have to die but are we going to die this way <laughs> you know but um, i just want to understand at this age you know when you 60 and 70 uh, what is the one thing that you're looking forward to you know rather than rather than feeling that uh, this is it this is what i can do and i can just stay you know do yoga and things like that but is there some kind of a joy the work that you're feeling that you're looking forward to and is it being killed by the pandemic or that pandemic has not moved you at all in any way so what is it that keeps looking keeps you uh, looking forward to you know when you're 60 when you're 70 and uh, is the pandemic interfering with that or no yes yeah, certainly it's interfering you know i mean we we normally uh, go and visit our children or they come down which we have not been able to do almost for a year now and that definitely has upset our uh, routine and you know that has probably um uh, uh, probably uh, the strong urge that you know when is it getting over all this is getting over and we going to see each other when we were seeing each other that urge was not so strong but now it does is <laughs> this so that's what we are affecting we suddenly started realizing things which we never realized i guess before you know we have taken things uh, granted for so long for granted and now we realize the importance of it which is uh, 
quite uh, nature's way of showing us and teaching us so many lessons i feel you know so yeah thank you alka for that that's a nice question jasinta also psychologically speaking um, they say that people when once they reach the stage of life they want to um, there's this thing of generativity and versus stagnation the aim is generally to give back to the society in the form of teaching your grandchildren or giving back to in through ngos or just you know doing social service but again this is very individual because these are just theories but as alka said i think it's 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 very much in line with it she wants to spend time with her family and grandchildren and she's already doing a lot of social service so anybody else has a different kind of a take on this i we we really i i mean we really need to hear you know yeah especially at this age Hello. Uh, Hello. Hello. Hi, hi, Mary. Hi. Uh, my fear is the other way around. My mummy is alone, so when she fell ill, that fear that you won't be there with her, that fear keeps haunting me on and off. Because we are so many siblings, but uh, just uh, one or two are there with her close by, but they also can't visit her except for one of them. so that fear that i won't be there for mommy there i won't be there that keeps haunting me very often thank you thank you mary yes so um, this is another perspective to it because uh, our parents are aging and really aging right now so there are times when there wouldn't be anybody to be there for them you know how would they call up but i'm sure that um, there is some some way in which they can reach out if god forbid you know they require that kind of a help so um, stay strong mary i'm sure they will your mom will be perfectly fine and these two days shall pass thank you. so thank you thank mary you. for that thank you anything else something different i would like to add something yes sure sure of course in the in the beginning one month into the pandemic i also had this fear that when will we see our children again of my three children one is in dubai one is in bangalore and both of them used to make it a point to come down at least twice a year but then now of course thanks to technology to zoom we have regular family meetings so at least we get to talk to them and all together as a family which has really helped but talking about outreach now i belong to a Group called the Lights of the World, along with Belinda and uh, Victoria, and normally we go to higher secondary institutions and schools, and we have certain programs for them, you know, on uh, self-esteem, uh, careers, values, etc. But now that schools are all uh, shut, we can't do that work. Uh, we kind of we are trying to reach out to people who have lost their jobs especially on board the ship and you know and come back to work so we are trying to help them maybe you know find other options of self employment and things like that something is already started on those lines especially for those who are into catering and i think this is a good platform uh, Bali, Vicky, I think you'll agree with me. Where we could get, of course, not here now, but you could send us uh, through WhatsApp suggestions that uh, would help us, you know, to kind of give these people options for self-employment. Because uh, so in that way, I find I am kept uh, busy with uh, some kind of uh, satisfying work. So during this pandemic, and now this is what we are trying to do, and I would be very happy if some more suggest. Now we are trying to give them options in agriculture, physiculture, uh, vegetable farming, growing mushrooms, catering, as I said. But if there are any other suggestions that you could make, uh, I would be very happy to get these suggestions on WhatsApp or you could send them to Victoria or to Malinda. thank you wow so this is another initiative here all of you seem to be extremely productive and generative i'm very proud of you so if anybody can reach out and make these groups that would be great 
so Jacinta, just see if you can kind of coordinate this. And I too can contact you for these once the school starts, you know, because I teach in a college for self-esteem talks and things like that. So that's really helpful for me. So uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Uh, before we move on, Nora has something to say. Uh, huh? Nora has something to say. Uh, she Finally, Nora, we've got your message. She says that there are so many thoughts in her head, but at the moment, uh, she feels so good that with, with, to be with all of y'all, especially after hearing such positive stories. Surely we did get close to neighbors and make made so many new friends, which is such a blessing, especially being in Goa after 47 years. Oh, wow. So uh, this is like, you know, coming back home and coming back to your roots. And this lockdown has been quite a boon to, to Nora. So thank you so much, Nora, for sharing. And I'm so sorry you can't hear as such. So yes, but thank you for sharing your thoughts. Hmm. So going back to Jacinta's very interesting question. Does anybody else have something to I share? I love from the Mumbai cars because Mumbai is really, really... Yes, high. yes, yes. The COVID cases are really high. So the Mumbai cars in the house, make some noise. <laughs> uh, the Janet... Uh, Brenda, Cheryl. Clarissa made her noise. <laughs> yes, so anybody from Mumbai, as Jacinta said, Mumbai is quite badly hurt. I know my uh, my mom's family is in Mumbai, so they are completely locked down in uh, Dadar Shivaji Park area. And my uh, cousin who was supposed to give all his CETs and everything, they're just at home. So it's very interesting because he's around, what's his age, maybe 18, 19, and it was his mother's birthday. So he should never step into the kitchen and he should be very busy with his own things. And now all of a sudden, you know, he's kind of, he made a nice brownie cake for her just sitting at home. So I'm very proud of him, you know. So youngsters today are just entering into the kitchen and they're showing their skills. So everybody's becoming master chefs. So they're going to have a lockdown master chef competition very soon here. You know? Uh, so, anybody else who would like to share? So, even if anybody wants to share something even later, I think uh, yeah. they can let me or Ridima's uh, email ID and numbers also should be shared, Ridima. I'm sure yeah, you. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. And then maybe, you know, people are still collecting their thoughts. Thoughts, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, um, if nobody is sharing, can we just go to the slides so we can kind of... Uh, so, uh, does anybody... Okay, so now I don't have anything much to say because you all have said it all. But I will just kind of uh, culminate um, the entire thing. And sometimes, you know, when we write it down, it feels good. Just the previous slide, just... Okay, somebody is unmuted. Okay, so one thing I would like to say is that whenever you all experience any sort of negative thoughts, especially, uh, you all need to kind of write it down. Okay, uh, so writing down your thoughts, even when you're grateful or when you are feeling happy or when you're feeling negative, it gives it reality. And whenever there is a negative thought, like, for example, I am not good enough. Okay, put this thought down on paper and ask yourself, okay, I am not good enough in what? What am I thinking about? I may not be good enough in cooking, but I'm a great gardener. I may not be good enough in singing, but I'm a great mother. So in this way, nobody is perfect. And we all have faculties where we are not very great at. So whichever negative thought you have, you can write it down and refute it, contradict it. Okay, so that gives you a sense of uh, fulfillment. So, and every day maintain a gratitude journal. So three things in the day, like before going to bed, perhaps you can keep it by your bedside. Put down things like, what was I grateful for today? Maybe just in the session, maybe the quiz I played. My grandchild called me up from wherever. I gave uh, food to, the, to somebody who needed it. I actually did a meditation. I practiced yoga today. So anything that you feel you are grateful for helps you feel fulfilled. Yeah. Uh, okay, so what can we do during this lockdown? Firstly, practice self-care. I don't need to tell you all this, but anyway... Uh, I think the youngsters need this because at least my students who I teach are between the age group of 18 and 23. And there are times when I kind of call them up for Viva or something and at 10.30 they're still waking up and they'll say that, ma'am, we just woke up, can you call me a little later? So I'm like, okay. 
so mm. um, this is mainly for them but anyway uh, firstly let's do things to improve your immune system as uh, albert i think mentioned it uh, vitamin c uh. tablets or whatever but always consult your doctor especially mm, if you have other conditions Okay, somebody is yeah, talking. Yeah, coming from Mumbai, but I think it's Sir, raining again. Is someone new? Yeah, they don't tell him that. Uh, I'm coming, Mumbai. Okay. Okay. Yes, thank you. Uh, so, uh, things to Im improve your immune function. You know, taking steam once you go out of the house and coming out. Come. Okay. Just give me a minute. I'll just mute it. Yeah, sure, 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 sure. Almost one hour. Yeah. Uh, thank you, Jacinta. Uh, yeah. So uh, these are small, like you know, those nuxas kind. They so kind of they say. Uh, having hot water with a little bit of turmeric, a pinch of turmeric in it can help. Then, if any one of you all knows how to make the traditional kadas, that can help. I don't know how to make them, so sorry for that. Uh, once you go out of the house and come back in, uh, to take steam inhalation, basically. Uh, wear your masks consistently. Wash them consistently. Uh, hand washing, washing in between your fingers like this, you know, like carrying, washing your hands rigorously. Uh, eating foods which are rich in vitamin C. Uh, constantly sipping warm water, I believe. So these are ways in which you can kind of protect yourself. Sleep well. You need to sleep well at the same hour and at the same position. Okay, so um, if you are sleeping at a, it, on the particular bed, do not uh, do not kind of eat on the same bed and read on the same bed. Keep that position only for sleeping because your body and your mind kind of knows that's where I'm supposed to sleep. Uh, eat well, eat nourishing food, exercise on a regular basis. I don't mean rigorous exercise. Even having a walk for 15 minutes and in your home or just you know doing the jhadu or mopping with your the long mop that is also helpful it keeps you kind of active uh, engage different parts of your uh, of yourself which i mean is uh, now playing scrabble or answering a quiz is engaging your cognitive abilities or your mental abilities cooking is engaging your uh, physical self also just as mop just like how mopping is so engage different parts of yourself so that you know your spiritual self can be engaged by doing a meditation or following a particular lecture given by a guru who you follow or something like that, reading the rosary or anything of that sort. So engage different faculties of yourself. Uh, moving on to the next slide, Jacinta. A social support, something which you all have already spoken about to a very great extent. I know you all can't actually go and meet family and friends, but virtual world can help you. Also keep the webcam on, you know, at first, uh, even I was at the clock work to keep the webcam on because I'm basically a shy person. But when I saw everybody was so comfortable with it, I realized, you know, that you actually feel like a family when you all see each other, even if that means virtual. So when you all are chatting with, uh, in this particular group or anywhere else, keep the cam on, webcam on. When you feel and see each other, you feel that sense of involvement and belongingness. Yeah? Uh, moving on. Coping. Uh, this is something I already spoke about. Uh, apart from recognizing your own emotions, recognize those of others, people who you are living with, your neighbors, etc. Because you all seem to be coping in a very healthy function, but not everybody is coping in that manner. So try to recognize when you feel somebody requires help and when their behaviors are drastically changed, you know. Uh, yeah. Again, something y'all have already spoken about. Uh, keep in regular contact with your loved ones via telephone, email. I know like writing letters that could be very uh, helpful, but you cannot do it right now. And if you feel you want to write to somebody who you really cannot contact, perhaps you can write it on a piece of paper and read it out to the person whenever he or she has is available. Yeah. So uh, keep uh, in regular contact with others. Okay, so uh, find out how to get practical help. Like for example, let's say I require to get my basic groceries and I do not have any way to go out because it's raining very heavily and I'd rather not risk it. Uh, see if you can call a taxi, see if you can call a family member and see, uh, take the help you require. So keep those uh, certain contact numbers with you um, all the time. It could be the doctor, it could be, you know, uh, how to travel from here to their groceries and things like that. I think uh, Goa has started a grocery app where they are kind of delivering stuff at home. And the Maxims have started it, if I'm not uh, wrong. Bombay was anyway working 
through that for a long period of time. So keep these numbers with you constantly. Put them on your fridge or somewhere, which they're they're very handy to you when you require it. You know, electricity numbers because in Goa the electricity goes off quite often, and I'm very grateful it's not gone off at this point of time, or we would not have any Wi-Fi. So keep such numbers with you handy. Uh, okay, this is an interesting thing to find ways to manage disappointment. Okay. Um, there were many events which were supposed to be there, like students had their farewell, or someone had their 50th anniversary, or, or you know, 70th birthday, or whatever it is, and you had plans to celebrate. Your family perhaps is coming from all over the world to celebrate with you, and now it's not going to happen for some time. So take time to feel sad. Take time to miss them. And then reframe how you feel about these events. Yeah? Reframe in the sense, reframe these thoughts. Okay, it could not happen today, but it will very well happen after six months and the feeling would be better. So kind of reconsider the way of thinking about them, but don't try to uh, neglect these thoughts, acknowledge them and address them. The more you acknowledge them, the more you can address them. So uh, yes, limit media consumption. So uh, what happened, someone said now that we are on WhatsApp quite frequently. Now my WhatsApp has a lot of information that is uh, just made up. And we kind of tend to, like my mother does it. She just sends me weird messages. She gets some forwarded ones from somewhere. This, this, this has happened. And then she'll be all panicky and hyper. But they do not have really a reliability source. A reliable source is not there. So limit your media consumption. If you really want to know about COVID, go to, you know, um, websites which you can trust. You have the Center of Disease Control. You have Goa Report Card, which is on Facebook. So the numbers over there seem to be a little reliable. Then you have uh, this um, Mila Monan who has these press conferences in Goa. So listen to those kind of sources and just listen and believe in WhatsApp because very often WhatsApp scares you more than makes you feel better. It's a great way of connecting with people, which is amazing. But uh, when you talk about information, be very careful. Um, too much news can cause you anxiety. So remember that. So just be a little careful. Okay. Declutter for five minutes per day. Decluttering is uh, basically just clear clearing your mind. How do you clear your mind? It can be by clearing a space in your house. Okay, so by just opening one drawer in the kitchen and rearranging the things which are there. So if you have a masala dabba, you're just rearranging the haldi, this, that, you know where everything is, everything is in order and that's when you start feeling better. Yeah, so open one cupboard per day when you are free. Fold the clothes, keep them properly, put some mothballs in that. When you declutter a space, you declutter your mind. Yeah. So uh, another way of doing it, and I do it quite often, is to check the checkbooks in your uh, closet. Okay, my this checkbook is here. This is how much I have. My this checkbook is there. This is how much I have. You are in control then. You're not lost. So uh, declutter for at least five minutes per day. You could declutter a space in your house. You could declutter the kitchen in your house. Anything. It will help you clear your mind. Uh, remember to have your medications on time. Uh, don't forget your doctor's checkups. I know it's very scary and risky to go to doctors now. But if you have your diabetes glycometer check at home or something like that, please uh, keep keep doing that. Do not uh, feel that the pandemic is here, so I should not you know, go to any doctor. Keep your BP, keep your sugar, everything in control. And uh, keep a check on that. Do activities to build your immunity, which I've already spoken about. Uh, always remember you are not alone. Yes, you are not alone. You have a lot of, uh, even if you are living alone, please understand that uh, this particular group itself is uh, enough to kind of keep you going. And you are doing some wonderful job over here. And uh, these are helplines which I would like to focus on. Um, the Corona helpline is for physical ailments, but there are some centers in Goa which have kind of uh, come together to start something called as covidapp.com. So they are very experienced psychologists and counselors who will uh, kind of give you sessions as and when required. So please write this down and keep it. If you or anybody else who you know requires this kind of information at any point of time. So it's covidapp.com. So that you could just go to that slide and yeah, just for two minutes, let them write down. Uh, this is... Purely began by the government of Goa uh, and Kuj, Sangat, and Antarman.
so i'll be sharing all this with jacinta she already has my slides she can keep them so if any time you require future reference it's all with her and uh, i would like to uh, say this quote or present this quote uh, when it is obvious that goals sorry when it is obvious that goals cannot be reached don't adjust the goals adjust the action steps so uh, this is a way of saying that uh, how we need to adjust ourselves in these times because uh, not always um, we are going to have how do i say you know, <coughs> we do not have everything in our control all the time so we need to control our own actions and our own decisions and behaviors so uh, yep and lastly um if you want the rainbow you got to put up with the rain and this too shall pass so remember this always this is a phase this phase too shall pass and there are many people who are there for you i am here for you this and that is here for you so um yeah this is just a small way of summing it all up thank you so much redima i think they can thank you very much very enlightening thank you thank you i hope thank i was of help yes and it was really nice to be with all of you all it was the first time for me but it was amazing thank you jacinta and thank you all of you for making me feel belong thanks a lot rima i think uh, many of us you know sometimes are aware but when it comes from an expert who knows yes. and has been practicing herself have been going through yourself for example you got married earlier this year now so i think we can really relate uh, to one another and uh, ridima as i said earlier she is uh, you know would be happy to hear more from you as because she's just finished writing a paper on uh, distress and coping with covid-19 so feel free to reach out to her and uh, she can also come back to you with a lot of suggestions and advices i think for now let's start with what she has already given some of us are already practicing and we can add tweak a little routine a little bit more all right any final words from anybody before we uh, close the session today yeah anita yeah go ahead um, hello um i'd like to say can i say Say thanks very much to Ritima for all that she has told us about, and also I very particularly would love to thank Jacinta and Nitesh for their wonderful work. They have really kept us entertained, fully entertained, and um, their time and effort is hugely appreciated by me and I'm sure by all the group. Thank you. Yes, Jacinta, you deserve a big round of applause. No, we don't know this group, Ridima. Please second that. The other way around. Please agree. Please agree. Beautiful. I'm sure you have got them all together, so it's a very good job you're doing. I'm very impressed. Really. Thanks. Thanks a lot for uh, sharing your time, Ridima. You are a busy. And once. Person. No, no. And once the pandemic is over, I hope we can all meet physically. <laughs> and kind of you all can share some nice stories with me so that would be great absolutely absolutely yes. thanks to everyone for joining in have a good day good time we are as she said we are not alone all right so with this let us have a good night and good day good evening everywhere god bless god bless Bye. 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 We are not.